Hello, my name is Aaron Warnock, and I'm a math faculty advisor for Pearson. I've been teaching math for close to two decades now, and today I want to share Pearson's story with you around graphing trig functions in my lab math. Over my years of teaching, I've used several different online homework systems, and when it comes to graphing trig functions, most of them are just going to be multiple choice. Ideally, I want to see my students graphing trig functions just as if they are graphing on paper. I don't want them to be choosing from a list of four options. Let's take a look at the awesome tools available to you in my lab. First off here, you see a graph for cosine x minus 1 and an empty grid. We click on Enlarge to Graph. We select the tool, either sine or cosine. And then once we choose that tool, we now select the amplitude. So in this case, the amplitude is 4. A vertical shift of minus 1. We can see the graph being drawn as I make those adjustments. So they're looking at the graph, they're identifying the amplitude, the phase shift. Not only is this not multiple choice, but watch what happens when I try a similar question. It not only oscillates between cosine and sine, the coefficients are changing. Here's another one that would be quite challenging for students. And I've graphed the trig function. This tool may not be exactly how you would teach it in class, but it's far better than a multiple choice my lab now has interactive figures built into their courses, which are phenomenal. This is one of my very favorites that I would be using just to teach class and just to talk to students about transformations of sine and cosine functions. Look here at our variables that we have available to us, A, B, C, and D. Especially if you're doing an online virtual class these days, the ability to adjust the scale of A and say, what does 2 sine look like? What does 3 sine look like? What does negative 2 sine look like? What does negative 3 sine look like? What is the difference between sine and negative sine? See how it is reflecting across the x-axis. What is the difference between sine of x and sine of negative x? It is reflecting across the y-axis, although it looks the same. So now let's switch to cosine and talk about how its difference with negative cosine of x reflects across the x-axis. And hey, look at this, cosine is an even function. Cosine of x and cosine of negative x are identical. Start looking at what happens as we put a horizontal shift on cosine. What happens when we put a vertical shift on cosine? Combine all four of these things for a very robust, interesting tool for graphing trig functions. Here the students are not actually graphing them, they are seeing what the graphs are based on the values put into the function. This is a fantastic tool, both for classroom presentations, as well as the students being able to play around and see how the graph is affected by different adjustments. This particular interactive figure is available on the multimedia library for your use in teaching. In this case, it actually appears as part of a question where the students are asked to graph 4 cosine 3x and then discuss the number of complete periods on 0 to 2 pi. There are many of these interactive figures. Every course is a little bit different, but also with Pearson Text, you can import questions from other texts. So you can find these, even if your course doesn't have, happen to have it, you can find them in other books as well. Here we have an interactive figure showing how the unit circle is used to graph sign. Really neat visualization for students who want to be able to see how that is being traced out. And then I love after seeing that, the next question I have here is showing how that can model your height on a Ferris wheel. Hit play again, we see the Ferris wheel turning, and the height of a person on a Ferris wheel actually traces out a sine curve, or cosine depending on your shift, of course. Show grid lines, show the function, show labels. In my experience, students can really struggle with the visualization of inverse sine and cosine and tangent. This particular interactive figure allows you to show the inverse, see that it is not a one-to-one -one function, and then start restricting your domain to see where does this become a one-to-one -one function. So I can restrict A and restrict B down to the point where I'm seeing, oh, there is the one-to-one -one function of inverse sine. Do it for cosine. We're gonna have to move out to the right a little bit. And again, this particular interactive figure was embedded in a question that the students have to engage and ask, answer something about, but you can also just use this as part of your, of your classroom presentation as you discover what inverse trig functions look like. So we've looked at the trig graphing tool that's built into MyLabMath. 
We've looked at interactive figures that are, can both be used as teaching demonstration, but also as tools for the students to work with as they answer questions. The last thing I wanna share with you is brand new GeoGebra questions that are being built into my lab courses as we speak. This is graphing a trig function and it's much more like you would be graphing on paper. So three cosine X plus one, the student has to choose, am I gonna use model one or model two? Obviously we see that model one is our sine function and model two is our cosine function. It's plus one, so I'm gonna grab the center of it and raise it by one, just like I would be thinking about raising my graph by one on the paper. And then I'm gonna use this scale to stretch it out by three and check my answer. That's one version that will be available. Another is moving these five points to graph negative three sine x plus three. So I know that negative three sine x plus three means that the center is going to be up three from the origin. And then the negative three means it's going to be reflected down. That spot looks like it's in the correct place. This one needs to be in the center. This one needs to be in the center and this one will be here. And again, I'm graphing out these dots basically to create my curve. Check the answer, well done. As a quick recap, ideally we would want students to be graphing trig functions by hand on paper. Most systems that I've worked with simply have multiple choice. In my lab, we've got our standard my lab graphing questions where the students are identifying key information about the graph and putting it into a table to graph that function. We've got interactive figures which allow students to manipulate very robust versions of trig functions and many other types of functions. This is great both for teaching in the classroom or in virtually online, as well as the students being able to manipulate and play with these functions in their homework and answer conceptual questions based on those interactive figures. And brand new this fall, my lab has 150 new GeoGebra graphing questions for pre-calculus and 150 for calculus as well. These GeoGebra questions are incredibly dynamic, the closest thing to graphing on paper by hand that I've seen in my